to the Pulse of Spokane. Join us for the latest in news, views, and conversation with community leaders. The Pulse of Spokane is brought to you in part by Homes for You, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Spokane Firefighters Local 29. Now, put your finger on the Pulse of Spokane. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Pulse of Spokane. Okay, well, we have some feel-good news to share with you today. Uh, Fourteen nurses in the oncology department at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston are expecting more than just patients this year. They are all pregnant at the same time, and one of them is actually expecting twins. So that is just too funny. Can you imagine? Day after day, each one of them probably showed up to work, and someone new said, oh, I'm pregnant. So who's pregnant today? I love it. All right, well, we have some great guests on the show today. Matt Santangelo, Executive Director of Spokane Hoop Fest, is here to talk about some upcoming deadlines and all about the event that is approaching just in a couple weeks. And Keith Connolly is here from Aristos to talk about their holistic approach to life and business and how you can live a full life. And then Kristen and Brian Pierce are here from Aspen Excavation to talk about bringing their excavation business to the Inland Northwest. All of that and more when we come back on the Pulse. We'll see you in a second. Good afternoon, Spokane. Today we have some of that beautiful sun over us with a high of 80 degrees. It will be in the 70s and getting very sunny as we progress throughout the week. During nighttime, we are going to see the temperatures drop down a little to the high 50s with some clear skies overhead as we go into the weekend. Some clouds and sun over in the Coeur d'Alene today with a high of 79 and a low of 49. And also some sunny clouds in the valley with a high of 78 and a low of 51. The economy is getting stronger, banks are lending again, and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928-5782, or visit online at homes, the number four, youspokane.com. Welcome to a new kind of talk show, Spokane Talks, where you find news, views, and conversations that include respect for opinions, facts, and diversity. Spokane Talks, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Fox 28. O'Brien Logistics would like to invite you to try our local and regional transportation services. With sprinter vans, lift gates, hot shot flatbeds, and expedited services, our people are ready to step in and help with your transportation needs. Our services are 24-7, 365, and we are trained and prepared to handle air cargo and Canadian shipments. Give us a call at 208-305-2311 or visit our website at obrienlogistics.net. That's O-B-R-I-E-N logistics.net. <laughs> All right, Keith Connolly is joining us now from Aristos. Welcome, Keith. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. And first off, just tell us a little bit about what Aristos is and what, what you all do. Well, uh, first of all, you know, Aristos is the, the Greek word for optimize. And so uh, that's kind of how we came up with the company name because that's what we, we, we look to do is we look to okay. optimize. And so we, we've got three different aspects of the company. We have Aristos Life, so optimizing your life, which is a human-to-human uh, -human kind of connection basically life hacking, helping you manage your life. And then uh, we have Aristos Business, which helps you hack the business aspects of things. You know, uh, what we say is a lot of people who start businesses know how to do what they do, uh, but they don't know a whole lot about running or starting a business. So we help them out with sure. that. And then the third part of the company is a consulting part of it. Uh, that's for those uh, businesses that don't want to go deep dive, but just want us to provide guidance and support. Okay, and you mentioned that there are seven attributes that you guys look at. You kind of take a holistic approach to life and business. Um, and what are those seven attributes? Yeah, the seven attributes specifically to the Aristos life aspect of things, so the, the human part of it, it starts with, you know, the core of who you are. What's your purpose? What's your motivation um, in life? You know, what, uh, what are the core principles that you stand for? Um, and then it uh, talks uh, 
about health and uh, mental health and physical health. Uh, so there's a nutrition component. There's a uh, exercise component. Um, there is work or your vocation. Uh, there is um, the community aspect of it, um, the social relationships, things like that. Uh, there is uh, service or giving. Uh, so depending, how do you give back to your community? Um, the self-education, the knowledge, uh, how are you growing yourself as an individual? Um, and then your physical environment, your living environment, where what's physically surrounding you. So that's the life part of it. Okay. That. And why is it so important that we're looking at all of these different you know areas of life and not just focusing on a couple right well and that's what most companies do out there right now and is focus on putting uh, you know some support behind one of these things and what we found through a lot of research and a lot of time is that these things are so interconnected um, so um, attached to each other that if you push on one it can absolutely affect the other and so we are encouraging uh, our clients to take a look at life holistically and and hack life basically by optimizing all of these things simultaneously rather than on an individual basis all right and so you and I were talking you know before the show started about you know is it mostly businesses or is it uh, just your everyday consumer that's coming mm -hmm. to you and saying, I need help with all of these areas. Right. Who's your kind of audience? Well, and we have, that's part of the reason that we have both aspects of the business, the life aspect of it, and then the business aspect of it, because we have both. Um, right now, what we're focusing on is the consumer aspect of it, the life aspect of it. Right now, we have 500 clients that we're running through a wow. um, split test, basically running them through our program that we've created. It involves you get your own coach, you get weekly or monthly or quarterly coaching depending on your membership level um, you get a software platform to share and uh, that's the community aspect of it and then uh, we're and then there's some technology associated with it I happen to be wearing one right now this is actually believe it or not a, a piece of technology this is fitness right here so it's tracking it. my sleep and heart rate and all those fun things right and um, so that's what we're focusing on right now. We're getting ready uh, to launch a, another round of 1,000 clients. This time we're capping it at 1,000 clients. Um, right now we have a waiting list of about 270. Wow. Uh, so um, we're, we've got about 750 spots uh, left open. Uh, we're going to launch it, uh, our website, uh, for the first time. We've been pretty low-key up until now. Going to launch our website for the first time this Friday and open up uh, so you can reserve your spot. Okay, and where can people find you at? Uh, so the website, uh, like I said, doesn't launch in, uh, until Friday, but it's going to be aristoslife.com. Okay, and that's, so you want to spell that Absolutely. for us? Absolutely. Okay. A R I S T O S okay. life.com. Almost like Aristotle. Almost. That's what I was yes, thinking of absolutely. this morning. Absolutely. So we're making all sorts of connections. There you go. All right. Thanks, go. Keith, for joining us. You're welcome. And yeah, take a look at his website uh, later this week. That'll start on Friday, Friday. you said. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we come back, we're going to take a look at all things Spokane Hoop Fest with Matt Santangelo. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Well, this is Looms Day in Spokane. We got about 40 firefighters and their friends and family handing out 40,000 cups of water as the day goes by. It's a very good opportunity to see the public and support them and help them out and cheer them on during Blooms Day. It's one of the best things about Spokane is that we have these major events and the whole community comes together not just to participate but to volunteer and show that they really care about our city and making our city look great. This type of an event really is emblematic of Spokane because so many people get involved. We have 50,000 people probably running this race. Always has been a very huge event. Right now we're at the corner of Broadway and Nettleton. It's the last water station before the finish, so people are pretty much uh, dehydrated by the time they get to us. They really need our water. The water stations are a vital part, especially on a warm day like today. It's real important that we have the volunteers to help with that. Without the volunteers, Blooms Day wouldn't exist. All up and down the course, there are people that are involved in this celebration. It really is a celebration of what Spokane's all about.
I'm Nikki Butler, and I'm a regional manager for STCU. My lunch buddy is Nicole. I'm Brandi Schloss. I'm a regional manager at STCU. My lunch buddy is Angelina. She's grown up with me. I've grown up with her. To see her graduate would be a lot of fun. Brandi and I have been lunch buddies since the girls were in second grade. It's great that STCU provides me with the opportunity to be part of Reach for the Future. We are committed to the children. We're committed to our community. I'm Nikki. I'm Brandi. And, and STCU, STCU is here for good. This is River Ridge Frame Shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. here at River Ridge Harbor, 2803 West Garland. Okay, we're back with Matt Santangelo, Executive Director of Spokane's Hoop Fest, the largest three-on-three -three basketball yeah. tournament in the world. It is. Is it, it feels weird saying that. You know, right here in Spokane, we have the largest basketball tournament. Yeah, celebrating his 30th year. Uh, first years. year was in uh, 1990, so Hoop Fest turns 30 this year, the end of June. Uh, we expect a huge tournament, um, but it is. It is the largest of its kind on the planet Earth. I and like does to it say still span 45 city blocks? I yeah, we may have thing. spread out a little bit. We actually may have spread out a little bit more. But, um, it's funny because... We have a significant number of teams that play north of the river, north of Riverfront Park. Okay. And then a significant number of teams that play south of. So really, we have the first and second largest three-on-three -three tournaments. I love it. It just so happens to be on the same weekend, just on different sides of the park. That's so great. Big, yeah. So tell us a little bit about what goes into putting on yeah. this event. Because there's planning all year for this yeah. thing. It's one weekend, but it's... It doesn't. It doesn't stop there. No. So I, I think it's important to kind of understand a little bit of the the breadth of what we're talking about. So in 2018, last year, the 29th year, we had 47 states represented in our registration. Wow. So I mean, literally the entire you know United States, several countries represented. So this is really a global event, and mm -hmm. it comes right to our little corner of the world, which is really cool. Um, huge source of pride for Spokane because no other city has it. There's there are three on three tournaments throughout the country, right. but none like, none like what Spokane is able to pull off. So it really should be a, a huge source of pride collectively for all of us that we can execute this thing here. Um, but you mentioned it, 45 city blocks, you know, expecting right around 6,000 teams, 24,000 athletes. Wow. You know, we count about 250,000 people downtown on the weekend. Um, and it generates about a $50 million economic impact to the regional economy. So this is... I mean, th those are big numbers. Absolutely. And even with all those numbers, you can't really know what I'm talking about until you see it. Because then you, once you see it, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is, you're just blown away by it all. Exactly. And it's hard to find a hotel room. It is, The weekend yes. of Hoop Fest. You know, people are in town. Yes. And it's really cool to see not only our own community, but like you said, people from all over coming yeah. together, playing basketball for yeah. a weekend. Usually it's pretty hot. Yeah. Um, but it's a ton of fun. Well, I figured out this will be my sixth event, my fifth year at Hoop Fest, but, but my sixth event being involved with. And I finally have the weather dialed. Like I, I know exactly what okay. to order up. So I've already ordered that up. That happens earlier in the, in the planning process. So we we get it right at the 80 degrees, you know, nice breeze. And then we're, we're money. You know, we've seen yes. it, of course, all over the place. Um, uh, but typically it is a little on the warmer side versus, you know, other um, more inclement weather. And we're fortunate for that. And it's just... It's such a source of pride because it is, it's our most vibrant, our most diverse, and our most inclusive weekend of the year. Absolutely. You know, bar none. And, and, and it's a great showcase for all those people that come back and see Spokane for what it is as a really vibrant downtown area and a community that comes together and comes out um, to support our events. And I think that's really cool. And you have some major deadlines coming up for yeah. volunteers and for athletes and teams. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the big deadline now is Friday, Friday at midnight. Uh, and that's our kind of our final deadline for team registration. Okay. Um, and like I said, we're, we're, in a, we're in a good spot now. It is a really large event, uh, but we still have some room. And we kind of call this period space available. So, um, and there is space kind of across the board, all the different divisions and everything else. So that's Friday at midnight. You can register your team at SpokaneHoopFest.net is our website. And then you mentioned another big critical component to our event, and that's volunteerism. An event like this doesn't happen uh, without the support of the entire community. It, we measure about 
2,500 to 3,000 volunteers to help us execute the event. Um, and that big one are court monitors. You know, it's the, mm -hmm. the women and men that really manage the courts. You do not have to have basketball experience. You're not refereeing courts. You're really just helping manage the game, getting players signed in and signed out. Um, you know, help with some of the rules, but not necessarily calling fouls or, you know, traveling or infractions or anything like that. And for all those people that come out, we hook you up. You get Nike gear from head to toe. Hat I love to, it. Hat to shoes. Um, and that's our way to say thank you for, you know, for allowing us to have this event. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it is. It's a great incentive for people to come volunteer. Um, but, you know, as a Spokane event and the other impacts that it brings to the region, that in itself is reason enough to volunteer. You, you know, you hope both those really matter, you know, because mm -hmm. you're going to have people that just, that it's an opportunity for a new pair of kicks. Sure, I mean, that, sure. That, hey, if that's it, come on out yeah. and volunteer. <laughs> if you, um, you know, if you want to feel good about um you know, showcasing our region and showcasing what our community can pull off, then come out too. I mean, both of those are our really big reasons as to, to why you would want to volunteer. Uh, and, you know, we all know you, you give to something you typically, you get more than what you give usually when, when you're given first. And I think that, you know, Hoop Fest is a great example of that as well. Absolutely. And, you know, there's always changes to Hoop Fest each year, especially the last couple of years as we've had renovations in Riverfront Park. Yeah. So what is that going to look like this yeah. year now that the park's kind of remodeled and gotten yeah, a well, facelift? We, we just found out Post Street Bridge might be going away because of, uh, yeah, weight bearing. Okay. Yeah. No, we get to be at the table. Hoop Fest gets a seat at the table for most all the kind of moving parts because um, on Hoop Fest weekend we use so much. You know, we sure. use the infrastructure of our city. Sure. Um, but no, the, the site itself looks very similar to years past. I mean, really the differences we're working on this year are more a kind of program or event related more so than the physical logistics of the site. Um, but it's going to look very similar to the last year, which is great because it takes a little bit of a piece and says, okay, at least we've done this before. Let's We can focus on all the other changes sure. that are happening. And, you know, what do you have to say in the sense of parking? Because mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a big thing for people. They don't know where to park when they're coming to yeah. Fest. They don't know what options they have. Uh, so talk a little bit about that. Well, all major parking garages we leave open. Okay. From River, River Park Square to the Parkade to the new parking lot up by David's Pizza on the yep. Wonder Building on the north side of town. Uh, all those we leave access in and out of those parking lots as well as some of the diamond, the surface lots that, that we have throughout downtown. You know, but you are still got to come downtown and you know what? Those parking lots aren't necessarily inexpensive. We don't control that. We right. don't control that, but um, but it, unfortunately, it's not it's not the the least expensive way to do it. You know what I tell people is use the Hoop Loop STA uh, Spokane Transit oh, yeah. uh, provides a Hoop Loop. It's a couple bucks. You can you can park in U dish in the U district over by campus or Gonzaga's campus, or you can park in the kind of the outskirts of downtown and just hop on the bus. Absolutely, and, and they actually have a map online of their pickup spots already for they Hoop do, Fest. and it's all around the site. So no matter where your game is, you can get relatively close right. before you get off the bus. Uh, and then really the, the our map, which is through our website, and then our mobile app, which will drop for Android and Apple June 1st, kind of will lay out all those little FAQs, all the little tips and tricks. And then all follow us on social media, at Spokane Hoop Fest, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, because especially as, this, as June starts to kick in, um, we'll get all those little tips of, like, how to take care of yourself so you can enjoy okay. the weekend. And there are, what, 32 days now till oh, it gosh. all begins? This is how I got gray hair. <laughs> But yeah, it is. And so we like said the big 32 days till the tournament that Saturday morning, we have events on Thursday and Friday uh, leading up to the tournament. Uh, but big, big push this week for registration. And then you'll hear us really asking for a lot of help. from volunteers. And, you, you know, I'm curious, what kind of staffing goes in kind of year round yeah. to, to maintain this event and plan and prep? Yeah. So we have a full time staff of seven. OK. Uh, and Spokane Hoop Fest, the or organization runs several programs from Spokane AAU to Ignite Basketball, our outreach program, to we take Hoop Fest on the road to Las Vegas with MGM. Awesome. Um, so we have a lot of programs that we run throughout the year that's all tied to the game of basketball. And, you know, it's amazing to see how, you know, there's all these hoops downtown, everything's set up so quickly, and then it's gone. Yeah. You literally snap and it's gone. Where is everything stored? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think well, that's no. what people are always so curious about. Where does it go? It well, just appears. And it's fascinating because it shows up. So Friday night at Hoop Fest is magic. At 7 p.m. we get the streets, and that's where the, okay. the transforms. But you're right. Sunday night is just as much because for those that – might not come down on the weekend you leave work on friday you actually come to a cleaner downtown on monday morning than what you left on friday afternoon mm -hmm. because of the work and this is all that volunteer effort that we right. refer to but we actually have a warehouse okay. um you know 
and not to give too much behind the curtains, you know, the, <laughs> the Wizard of Oz here. But um, and they all go back out to our warehouse that night. So they come in the week okay. of and they leave on Sunday night. All right. And typically by about 1130 midnight, assuming everything goes smoothly, the site team is at a Red Lion Barbecue having a, having some food after everything's put I away on a, on Sunday night. I love it. And w- okay, so what what is the website? Where can people find you yep. to volunteer? Because like he said, that deadline's on May thirty first this Friday. Yep. So uh, uh, plane registration is May thirty first. That's all at www.spokanehoopfest.net. Uh, you'll see a big register and play button, or you can um, search for the volunteer link, and those not only draws or kind of gives you an an idea on court monitors but all those other areas that we have help on and and those are um uh you know we need help all around the site so there's a lot of different ways to get involved a lot of opportunity all right thanks for joining us matt thank you and we will have hoop fest coverage right here at spokane talks the weekend of the big event and we appreciate matt for joining us today when we come back we're gonna hear a little bit about a new excavation business here in the inland northwest but we'll be right back this is river ridge frame shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. Here at River Ridge Hardware, 2803 West Garland. Welcome to Tom Sawyer Country Coffee. Tom Sawyer Country Coffee only roasts the finest organic coffee for our signature blends. Enjoy a cup at our coffee shop and local businesses and organizations across the region. I'm Tom Sawyer and we choose the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to a new kind of talk show, Spokane Talks, where you find news, views, and conversations that include respect for opinions, facts, and diversity. Spokane Talks, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Fox 28. All right, we're back with a couple folks from Aspen Excavation. And you guys have an interesting story because you didn't just kind of start up a business in Spokane. You were originally uh, from the Denver area. So talk a little bit about what brought you here. Well, we chose Spokane just because of the all the natural beauty here and everything the city has to offer. In fact, we, we haven't even had a chance to see half of it yet. Yeah. Our heads are just spinning. We, uh, we love lakes and the mountains, and we wanted to be closer to the ocean. Right. And Spokane just has all these things going for it and more. And so what's it been like starting now your excavation business here? Because I know you had an excavation business with you in Colorado, and then you closed that up and then opened up shop here in Spokane. So what was that process like? Uh, it's been a great experience. It's a lot of work, as you probably know, um, but the people here have, have really helped us in that regard. Everybody's been really helpful and friendly, and Spokane's been great to us so far. Uh, One thing I've noticed, because I do a lot of the paperwork, is actually the bureaucracy is a lot easier to deal with here in Spokane than it was in Colorado, getting all of our licensing and permitting and everything. And we're actually um, licensed in Washington and in Idaho since we live so close to the border. Okay, great. And so what kind of jobs do you guys do? Because I know when we're talking excavation, there's like really little things that can be done and then there's like big you know infrastructure projects with excavation so what kind of jobs do you tackle well our bread and butter is helping home homeowners uh, we, we do foundation digs for new houses and okay. additions uh, we do driveways we do sewer excavations for repairs and new sewers um, also you know uh, septic systems things like that and uh, leveling lots so it's been great. All sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So really kind of the focus is on the homeowner then. It is. And their, and their needs, which is great, especially as, you know, Spokane is increasing in population. We just reached over half a million people yeah. a couple months ago. So that's really exciting. And so what is your kind of reach? Are, are we going into, you know, you mentioned Idaho, Coeur d'Alene area. Like how far out of Spokane would you, you know, go to clients? Yeah. Uh, probably anything within an hour would sure. be, you know. and. You know, we'll, we'll look farther than that, too. Um, we just really like to see the area. And so, you know, anything within an hour, definitely. And um, even farther than that, really. So far, I think our furthest client away has been in Newport. 
Okay, Newport, Idaho. Mm-hmm. I love it. And, you know, Vinny, do you have your uh, their website there that we can pull up in just a sec? We'll take a look at that. I know you guys um, have a new website, um, and people can check you out on Aspen Excavation, and that number is 747-2-DIG, the Spokane Area Excavation Professionals. I love it. Yeah. Uh, my wife, Kristen, built that website and also our logo, and we're just really proud of that. She's so creative. That's great. It looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. And so if people want to contact you, you know, like you, you said, if they need that driveway done or there's excavation jobs at home, uh, how can they reach you um, besides your phone number? Do you have a Facebook page that they can go to, or what's that look like? We do have a Facebook page, and it is at Aspen EX, and I manage the Facebook page. Okay. Uh, they can go to the website, and there's if you're browsing on your mobile device, there's a link straight to the phone number that calls straight to my cell phone. Awesome. Or you can send an email. There's a little uh, form to fill in that you can send an email to us asking us a couple of questions and I normally get back to all emails and phone calls and any sort of inquiries uh, within an hour or two. That's awesome. Yeah, and sure. so, you know, I'm sure this time of year especially is pretty busy for excavation projects. So what does that look like, you know, because this is a year-round business, so what does sure. it look like in the winter months, you know, because we get all four distinct seasons here. Oh, yeah. Well, we were uh, really busy with snow plowing in, in February. Okay. We, so we do snow plowing, some commercial stuff, and some residential stuff. Um, other than that, it's... Uh, Cutting wood and hang, hankering down with the family. Sure, sure. <laughs> Those kind of the least busiest months of the year. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, I hope you're able to you know check out more of the lakes and stuff since you're since you've just got to town. Uh, okay, yeah, wait. like you said, the area is beautiful, and I think that's why so many people not only come here but why they stay here. Um, and it's it's just a great place to raise a family. So thanks for joining us, you guys, and thanks, best Colin. of luck with your new business. And that is all for the Pulse of Spokane on this great Tuesday afternoon. We will see you tomorrow with some really exciting guests. Stay with us. Bye-bye. The Pulse of Spokane is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksMedia.com, which is solely responsible for its content. The Pulse of Spokane is brought to you in part by Homes for You, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Spokane Firefighters Local 29. Ask the host a question, recommend a guest, or hear this program again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com.